Okay, I'm back. Uh, that last video had some kind of dumb stuff in it, but I'm jumping around and rambling, and y'all just have to deal with it, you know, uh, or not. Anyway, um, I wanted to mention I went on a trip recently. I went up to uh, Crowley's Ridge in northeastern Arkansas, and that was kind of cool. And I went to, for a number of reasons, but in part to seek out some of this, which is Crowley's Ridge Cobble Chert. And this stuff is kind of beastly to deal with, a lot of it uh, raw. I mean, you know, you can cook it, but it's, uh, what it is, I think it's glacial till pushed down and created this big ridge in what would otherwise be like a flat delta area off the, the west side of the Mississippi River. Um, but there's this ridge in the center of it, Crowley's Ridge. And so I hung around there for a week. And I ran around and I went to different places. There was a cool museum that I went to at the State University there. And uh, I went to a cool nature center there. And got into some places where I could find rock and get rock. So anyway, I brought home a couple of buckets of this. And it's just beastly. And it's like the stuff I worked when I started working on the Colorado River cobbles around here. And these are Crowley's Ridge. These are Crowley's Ridge points. Um, from extremely, this is the best of the worst, kind of, for some of the, some of the, um, material, but, and, and they were small, you know, these were not large cobbles or anything like that. This is a raw stuff, <clears throat> but I wanted to mention to you the, the fluting. Um, here's the deal, you know, I like to flute stuff. I've, I've got jigs, I've got a Solberger, and I've got a guillotine type jig, and I, I have used them and stuff. And I used to do, I used to like to do a bunch of full length fluting and stuff, but I haven't done much of that. I haven't done much of that in a long time now. I need to start doing it again. I just got bored with it because I did a lot of it. But um, on fluting these things, you have a, a, a potential problem when you're trying to flute this kind of stuff because this rock is so tough that. If you put force into it very fast, um, you're going to blow up a little bulb in there and it'll just roll out and you will not get a flute. Um, and, and a good way to avoid that is by putting downward force on it to initiate it and get a peeling flake initiation instead of trying to push it inward like you normally would. Um, but that raises the issue of, well, then how do you get the flute to run at all? And also, how do you keep from in snapping from, you know, getting a reverse hinge that, that snaps the thing in half, cuts the thing in half? Well, what I've started doing with stuff like this is I already know in advance that it isn't going to work well if I try and drive the flake the normal way because of the material. And it's a combination of the graininess and the toughness, but it's bad. So what I do is... I take my light, um, my like leather, and I'm taking two layers of the leather, fold it and get a double layer, and I, uh, I make a fairly, a fairly stout platform and stuff, but then I take and I stretch it as tight as I can on both sides, so it's as tight as I can stretch it across there. Only in that short distance where my fingers are holding it. It's looser down here, but it's still there. It's touching the face, but it doesn't have any pull on it. So by doing that, what I'm doing is I'm creating a situation where this hinge, just, this flake just really can't hinge down very much for very long, and I'm not putting pressure anywhere further down it. So then what I do is I jam it in my leg hard so I get the, the front end support. And uh, basically, you know, I'm using the round, round tip of the punch and setting it on the, uh, setting it on the, on the platform, you know, with just enough bite to where the rounded part puts a little bit of an inward shove, but a lot of the shove is downward. And then I hit it with something that's not too fast and too hard. You know, sometimes if I'm wanting a short flake, I will go ahead, or a short run like this is not that long a, a, a flake, but it would have been hard to do, if not impossible to do the pressure flager. 
Um, I, I'll hit that with antler a lot of time, but if I want to go as far as I can, sometimes I'll, I'll hit it with, uh, I'll hit it with hardwood, real hardwood. Um, so anyway, it becomes more critical that you do things right when you get longer, and especially if you get heated material. So this material here, um, this is, is lightly heated, but it's still heated, and it's a little bit, doesn't have quite the tensile strength of some of the other stuff. But as you can see, it's fluted, and it was fluted at the end, you know, after everything else was done. And you say, well, that's pretty risky. Well, yes and no. It's risky if you do it wrong. But um, this is actually fluted twice, you know, shots on, on two side by side on there. Um, and it worked. Um, and I was going to show you another one on better material. This is this is Georgetown, and you can see that one ran pretty good. I actually kind of like feather terminations. It doesn't thin as much, but I still like them. Um, you might say to yourself, well, gee, I've got a bunch of narrow flutes here. Yeah, the reason the flutes are narrow, number one, it's how you isolate your platform. But number two, it's how much of a median ridge you have. This stuff is all uh, got body to it. I didn't make these things real flat and thin. If I'd flattened the convexity out more, it would have run considerably wider. But uh, there's a number of variables there that you can deal with. I'll show you one more. I've been on this kick with this stuff lately. I get on different kicks and do different things. This one, I started out, you know, I preformed it, and then I decided I wanted to make a... Um, a drill type thing, but you can see I fluted pretty pretty substantially before I went to making the drill type thing. And then on the drill type thing, I I tried to get me a good pattern going there of sinuous edges and stuff, Just goofing around. Okay, so that's all I want to say about that. What to do, what to do. I mean, that was most of the things I wanted to say. I guess I could hit... What should I hit? Oh. I hit some weird stuff. Uh, this stuff's nasty. I think I've hit it on camera before. But it has very poor uh, quality without heat. Um, comes from Central Texas. It's got a lot of fossils and some liminess in it and stuff. But it's cool looking, so I like hitting it. I mean, I like I like the results. I don't necessarily like hitting it. But, you know, if you get it, then you hit it. Kind of cool stuff. Always remember when you're hitting on the cortex, the chalk, got to take that into account. A little harder. Make sure you So here's where the little fossils start. And if you look right there in the middle, there's a little Turritella seashell. I like those. Okay, so, oh, my, my trip, I, yeah. So, <clears throat> after a day or two of, of running around in the ultimate heat, Oh, it's nine minutes. Wifey's home. I'm going to stop and come back. I'll be back. Bye.